Picking up where we left off on risk, the next term we need to consider is loss. Loss implies some compromise of the CIA, the confidentiality, integrity, and or availability of our valuable information assets. And if these assets get compromised in this manner, it has a negative impact on our profits. We will lose money. Therefore, we have a loss. A countermeasure is some control whose job is to either eliminate the potential or reduce the potential for loss. If I can provide a countermeasure on a vulnerability, what this says is the vulnerability either no longer exists, which means there could be no risk, or the vulnerability is greatly reduced, which means I've reduced the attack surface, and now it's much more difficult for the bad thing to affect us negatively and impact our profits. If I can reduce the likelihood that the bad guy can walk right into our warehouse and take a box filled with cell phones that might be worth $10,000, that would be a good thing. So I'll introduce locked doors. I'll have a security guard sitting there watching, monitoring, and only authorized personnel are allowed to enter the warehouse, for example. So if I can find some way to reduce the likelihood that the bad thing or bad guy can negatively impact our profits, that would be the nature of a countermeasure. And finally, a countermeasure will target the level of loss that might be incurred. So maybe I can't put that security guard there 24 by 7, but I can put the security guard there for 95% of our business hours when the building is unlocked and people are moving about in it. Our countermeasure should target vulnerabilities, likelihood, and or impact. And this will help maximize our profits by avoiding losses. Countermeasures must always be cost justified. Countermeasures will cost us money. We have to pay for that security guard. We have to pay for those locked doors. We have to pay for the card swipe that allows access to the restricted areas. However, the cost of those countermeasures should be substantially lower than the amount of loss we could experience, the value of the asset that could be compromised. I will always cost justify my countermeasures. I also will always apply these countermeasures in multiple layers. That security guard alone isn't the one magic bullet that will keep my enterprise protected. I need a security guard, and I need cameras, and I need fire alarms, and I need permissions on files and folders, and I need encryption for my data as it commutes across the internet. So what we're going to learn is I have to apply these countermeasures in multiple layers. Now let's look at the types of threats that could negatively affect us. The threat, once again, is that potential that something will affect or interact with one of our vulnerabilities, causing us losses. So there are four types of threats. Mother Nature will hit us with storms, hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis, blizzards, things along these lines. If your employees can't get to the office because of an ice storm, then you've lost productivity today. Your profits haven't been maximized today. You have experienced losses. If a flood destroys your production facility, you'll experience losses. The second family of threats is a man-made threat. So this is a human willfully or accidentally affecting your profits. We have the willful attacker. That would be like a hacker breaking into your web server, into the database that holds all your customers' names, addresses, and credit card numbers. Boom, you've experienced a loss. This would be employee sabotage, willful destruction of property, theft of property. We have riot. We have litigation. These are lawsuits. A customer sues you because they fell on your property. Litigation will introduce losses. So these are man-made types of threats. And it is our job as a security professional to mitigate the likelihood that these threats will impact us in a negative manner. So our goal is to eliminate or reduce the likelihood that these bad things can happen. We might look at errors and omissions. This is not the willful attack, but it is still man-made and a lot of losses occur due to errors and omissions. And then another human-born type of attack is called social engineering. And this is where a bad guy somehow tricks one of your employees or more 
into providing that social engineer, that attacker, some unauthorized level of access. We let them into the warehouse and he's able to steal some cell phones off the shelf. Or we let him into an office and he's able to read confidential files that are sitting on the desk of the person he's waiting for. The social engineer tricks people into giving them access they are not authorized for. That's a man-made threat. The next threat is a technical threat. Technical threats are things like a server failure, a software bug that causes the application to crash, and now my workers can't get to the data. Or perhaps the application that crashes causes a corruption of the information, of the database, and now we can't get to the information asset. Viruses, because they're not targeted per se, they're more of a browsing or grazing type of attack. These are called technical attacks. Now, that virus was written by a human. But once the virus is released into the wild, the virus is autonomous, separate from the human. Now, if there's a bad guy who is writing exploit code and targeting your server, that's not a virus. That is a man-made attack, willful the hacker attack. So understand the difference between those two. And then another form of this autonomous software code that will do you harm is called a worm or other forms of malicious code. Now, the fourth type of threat is to your supply system. If your data center can't get electricity to keep the data center active, your data center goes down, and as a result, you've lost availability and you are now experiencing reduction of your profits. So electricity is one of those core supply system things. If there's some threat that can affect your supply of clean, stable electricity, we need to defend against that. The next one is heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. If the facility is too hot, your employees aren't going to stick around and work. If it's too cold, etc. So recognize we have to have this habitable environment for our workers to work and be productive at their maximum potential. So these are the sources of the supply system, and therefore there are threats to the supply system. At an extreme level, that last item on this list, raw materials, is a threat to your supply system. This typically is only considered when we're looking at business continuity and disaster recovery. Now, that's typically the only time the IT security professional deals with these raw materials is in business continuity and disaster recovery. Typically, the IT security professional deals strictly with keeping the information systems alive. However, business continuity says it's our job to see to it the business never fails. Well, if you have some critical raw material and you can't get a steady supply of that critical raw material, this could impact your organization so severely you might go out of business. Therefore, when we're looking at business continuity, raw materials become one of those threats to the supply system. That's about the only time that comes into play. Typically, we're looking at electricity for the data center and then all the things required to keep our work environment habitable so that our workers can be as productive as possible.